So today we're here with Lake Speed Junior of Total Seal. Uh, we, we're getting, you know, our normal tour that we get here. I mean, at this point, it's like going to Disneyland for the <laughs> third time. You know, I, it, it's always fun. Uh, but he and I are talking and something came up, a, a Facebook post we made a while back uh, with data that Lake actually provided yeah. uh, that said, uh, piston rings are the number one source of friction in an engine. Correct. And the problem is our audience didn't believe it. Right. They I heard that. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it, that study was from the Department of Energy. What do they know? All right. But <laughs> the thing is, so that was, that was one study that was in 2008. Since then, both Ford and GM have come out with similar studies that found the exact same answer. That okay. that piston ring rubbing against the cylinder wall is the number one source of friction in an internal combustion engine. All right, now let's clarify something because there was some, some qualifying sure, in, in the sure, comments. Sure. We're not talking about the piston system. We're not talking about just the rotating assembly. We are talking about the entire internal combustion engine, correct? Correct. So valve springs. Yep. Camshaft. Yep. Lifters. Yep. Lifter bore wear. Yep. Number one, end of story, no ifs, ands, or buts. Number one. And by how far? By a lot. A lot, a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, like uh, the Ford study said 40% of all friction in the engine is the piston and the ring rubbing against the cylinder wall. Now, here's the reason why. So, if you think about a piston ring and the piston itself, mm -hmm. they have to stop twice each stroke. So what happens is, as a tribologist, you're, you're gonna, that piston ring is gonna experience all three stages of lubrication, from mixed film to boundary, all the way to full film lubrication. Now, you'd think full film lubrication is actually the lowest amount of friction, and it is, until you begin to increase beyond that. When you have really high engine speeds, you build a lot of film thickness. Okay. A big hydrodynamic wedge. Well, viscosity is a fancy word for resistance to flow. That's internal friction in the oil. So you can have at very high piston speeds, mm -hmm. a lot of friction from within the oil. So what's happening is, you're going back and forth, that coefficient of friction is going wild all over time. Plus, say a V8 engine, there's more surface area. So we know there is resistance, there's loss in trying to turn the valve train, but in reality, it's that friction of the piston rings and the assembly running against the wall, running through all that oil is where the majority of the friction occurs. So, with And the higher the RPM of the engine, the worse it is. Oh yeah, because you're increasing piston speed. And right. you just said when you surpass that, that full film boundary, it just starts becoming a wedge, and wedge means more friction. Right. Higher speed, more friction, more friction, more heat, more heat, more wear. Right. And I, listen, I can bore everyone to tears with all the technical details on why a thinner piston ring reduces friction in your engine, but let me spare you that, and I'll just tell you a fact, that the highest RPM racing engine in the world are found in We'll call it International Open Wheel Motorsports. Because you know, we can't say the name. Formula One, <laughs> IndyCar Racing, those kind of things, yeah. right? Rings for those applications happen to be manufactured here. And I can tell you for a fact, they're not thick. <laughs> they're way thinner. That, that's a great way to put it. They're not thick. They're not thick. And they're not made out of cast iron. And they're not molly-coated. You know, they are thinner. Alloy rings with advanced PVD applied coatings. And you know somebody's now going to say, oh, Formula One rings aren't coated. They said so. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's not what was said. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just saying that, you know, and I've, I've said this before in some of our tech talks, and this is a fact I can talk about, right? Mm -hmm. that in 2002, so 20 years ago, uh, the state-of-the-art piston ring in NASCAR was an 043, 043, three millimeter ductile molly ring set. Mm -hmm. And those engines would last one race, and you have 500 miles, and you have to tear the engine apart, and it would be down, you know, five to eight horsepower, and you had to hone the block, you know, a few thousands oversized to clean everything up. Today, they run a 0.5 millimeter top ring. That's 020, by the way, so that's half the thickness of that 043. Mm -hmm. A 0.6, so that's an 024 second ring, two millimeter ring package. 
And those short blocks will now run 1,500 plus race miles and be down zero horsepower. Those rings aren't ductile molly. They're steel, they're PVD coated, they're lower tension, which means a longer lasting bore. Thinner mm -hmm. rings make less friction they make less temperature there's less cylinder bore less wear. wear yes right i mean there's a little block back in that corner over there there where we do work for some teams they order their pistons in one thousandth oversizes so each time they rebuild it they're going one thou over to clean it all up so imagine 10 over is now 10 rebuilds right so you're not only you're not only reducing wear and and consumables and all that you're extending the life of your hardware right? uh -huh. i mean i guess it's all hardware but. yes I mean, it's it's these rings may cost more on the front side mm -hmm. but if you get that ring seal soup right you get the right ring the right cylinder finish and all that stuff yep. it extends the life you're going to talk about three or four times longer you know a, a great analogy is most people will have a gold coated drill bit in their toolbox yep that gold coating is titanium nitride yep. that's a type of pvd applied coating yep our little engine there at shavers that has all those thousands of dyno pulls on it guess what that's is a it? titanium nitride coated ring that's a tin that's got to have tin rings yes it's a, it's awesome. a titanium nitride coating yeah. over a steel ring and those things live forever because of the better coating. What the same coating that makes that drill bit last longer, it makes your rings last longer. And that's, awesome. that's what the whole thing is. That's awesome. And it looks pretty. They look really cool. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Right. So, so I mean, I'm saying, like you said, the point is the thinner rings, but think about Ford, right? Yeah. For example, an old 289 made about what? One horsepower per cubic inch. If roughly, you were lucky. right? So today, <laughs> An EcoBoost makes the same horsepower that 289 made no, at it, half the cubic inches. It makes way more. <laughs> I, I have I have both sitting in my driveway. Okay. Honestly, I have I have a, a standard push rod. Yep. I've got a four valve modular. Yep. And I've got a 2.3 liter EcoBoost. Uh huh. You care to guess which the most powerful is? EcoBoost. More by, power per cubic inch. By a significant amount, even more than the Cobra. And I'll tell you which one has the thinnest piston rings in it, too. Oh, I know it's the EcoBoost. EcoBoost. Yeah. I mean, literally, that old 289 Ford had a 564th, 564th, 316th ring package in it. Yes, sir. That's about like 35 pounds combined radial tension. That EcoBoost has a 1.2 millimeter, 1 millimeter, 2 millimeter ring package in it that might make 14 pounds total combined tension. That's insane. But it will actually live tons longer, and it does it under boost. And that's technology. It is. It's just technology. It's not that. It's not about it being thinner. It's yeah. about the fact that you're going from cast iron, which is not a great material, yes, to stainless steel or tool steel. You're going from old spray-on type coatings, which yep. aren't great, to PVD applied coatings, which are space age technology. Yes. Right. Yep. This is NASA stuff that you're applying. So it's just taking modern technology and applying it to the internal combustion engine yep. to make them more efficient. I mean, it's, it's aluminum versus steel, right? It's not that yep. aluminum versus steel are inherently one stronger than the other. It's that you can make one thinner at the same weight. Right. And that's why it's lighter. It's not that it's necessarily that much less dense. Right. It's just that you can make it just as strong. Well, titanium, I guess, is a good, good example of that too, right? Yeah. Make a much thinner part, the same strength, and it saves weight. It's all about material technology. So, I mean, maybe on the horizon we have i mean obviously we're talking o20 in formula one or, uh, or no, i'm sorry nascar yeah. nascar yeah um so if we found a new awesome thing we could maybe get thinner who knows with the same durability yeah could be yeah different materials i mean we're, we're working on some pretty advanced uh, alloys right now that have incredible heat transfer properties as well so that you can manage even more combustion temperature with an even thinner ring so yeah as material technologies as coating technologies advance we'll be right there to help bring that technology to you guys well you just said something that that i don't think we talk about enough uh the rings touching the cylinder wall and the piston they are one of the most one of the largest i would is that correct the largest uh uh direction 
or not direction, the large. It's one of the heat flow paths. Yeah, yeah, one of the, the but largest. But the paths. oil is also cooling your piston. Like yeah. in your EcoBoost engine, mm -hmm. it has oil sprayers yep. on the bottom of the pistons. So don't forget about the oil. If you only are thinking about the piston rings as a way to move heat out of the mm -hmm. piston, you're missing the boat because a great way to increase the efficiency and durability of your engine is by utilizing that oil as a coolant to take that temperature out of the piston. Awesome. Think systems, not components. I think that's where we get bound up. Yep. Is you focus on one component, and you don't think about this. You don't see the forest for the trees, right? Bingo. All right, well, awesome. Look at us getting getting schooled up by Lake. <laughs> and, and to think, this video wasn't even gonna happen. This wasn't, this was spur of the moment, seat of the pants, and we just got an education. Thank you, Lake. No, thank you for coming by, and hope y'all enjoyed watching.